I'm Maeve Collins. I'm a member of the Ground Up Artists Collective and we're sitting in the Courthouse Gallery at the Ground Up Artists Collective 10th anniversary show and it's called Feasting on Wind. The Ground Up Artists Collective is a group of artists who mostly work in the rural environment. The Ground Up Artists were started 10 years ago. It was a Clare County Council initiative and Fiona Woods was working in Clare County Council at the time with Siobhan Mulcahy. So it started off that there was a lot of artists living in mostly in North Clare and they were rurally based and there was they decided really there was a need for them to link in with each other, to support each other um, in their own art practices while maintaining their own autonomy. It was felt that there was a need really to communicate with the rural communities in which the artists lived. None of the original members are in the current group, but there have been overlaps of members, so people have come and gone in the last 10 years. We do have links with older members like Fiona Woods at the moment. We've commissioned her to do an essay and to reflect back and see where we do stand today. So we do still maintain links with our older artists. What we really wanted to do with this exhibition was to see where we did all stand, you know, what we were standing for now, how much of the original intentions of the group were still there, how important was the local, what were the relationships that were taking place between the artists and the local communities, and how did we connect with each other as artists, and where would we go in the next 10 years as a group. We said for the 10th anniversary we would take a studio in the courthouse gallery and use it as a lab space so that we could work together and we could put up work and we could see what each other were working on and see how we maybe influenced each other. So we kind of want to see what was common to us all as well. There definitely is a social engaged practice among many artists here. Um, not that every one of these artworks would, you know, is maybe using that strand of an artist's practice. So it's not open, I don't think Monica de Bath, Pauline, Beatrice Gogan, and Marianne Slevin would come to mind straight away as being um, art that is that is looking at, maybe has an element of activism in it as well and is socially engaged with particular places maybe. Monica is looking at coastal land use um, and our relationship with that and our relationship with each other. She's taken for this exhibition sites of exploration as places where there are tensions, where there has been industrial use of coastal land areas. And she's using her paintings of seaweeds as the lens through which to do that, to explore. And also the notebooks which, where she recounts and she gathers and collects um, the distinct voices, um, so they could be from concerned locals and the environmental project manager. Um, so this work, she really is revolving though around the area where a large gas company has, has moved to use the local land in County Mayo. Monica is also interested in the area between um, North Clare and the tensions that exist at the moment going out to Inishir. Yeah, so looking at Galway Bay. But we're not all based in Clare. was collaboration. Marianne and Trudy actually did collaborate. So while we were on a field trip down to look at where Trudy's practice was, Marianne and Trudy actually engaged, they had a crossover 
um, with many things because Marianne is interested in water fluoridation. So while we were there, we could see from the rainforest across the water that there was an aluminium factory. And this is really um, important to Marianne's practice, which explores water fluoridation and the industrial again and how it's affecting the environment. So the two artists work together to create that a, a collaborative work of painting and text. Trudy van der Elsen was working on ring forts and she was interested, I suppose, in the collective places. So taking the ring forts as a historical look at that and a spiritual look at that. Um, and she was visiting the, the ring forts and staying in them. Um, and in her paintings, she is using them really as her muse and she's recording maybe as sketches her feelings and the energies that she's picked up in the ring forts as places where people lived together where they had animals living with them and where they had a place to look out from and how they lived as a community she had a very meditative process and a very quite an absorbing time just sitting and settling in these ring forts. Mary Ann uses, it's a lot of text, but it's also her own personal feelings with mixed up in very accurate, um, she tries to find very accurate scientific evidence and information about water fluoridation and how it is affecting us. And then she also juxtaposes that, I suppose, with her own feelings on the subject. And she does that through a mixture of drawings and also text. She works also with found objects in her home and she responds to them with the information that she's found out about um, the effects of water fluoridation in our waters in Ireland, mm -hmm. um, which is a current and contemporary issue. So she's brought it right into her home. So she works on basins or marigold gloves and um, her children's clothes. Pauline's work is, um, come, is called Public Worry Project and Pauline, she's an activist as well as being an artist and an educator. So Pauline really took to the streets um, and to create small personal public spaces where people could voice their apathy or voice their dissent or voice have voices of protest and um, so she's really trying to interrupt the apathy that she feels is in the country at the moment. She did a piece as well as part of this exhibition where she went to the local cafe in the Guru Tea House and that was the first time in this practice of um, where she brought the individuals together in an event where many people could voice their concerns. <coughs> She uses cards really to use where there's gestures on the cards of people's hands and um, she writes down how, what are their feelings and she writes down what is the action that they can maybe take. So these notelets and blackboard spaces um, are an interactive way for people to record their voices mm -hmm. in a playful way.
So Barry, as I said, kind of took the the opportunity of making a work, a new work, so um, about the group or to explore how we worked as a group. So he had just moved to the rural and his own work was interested in quantum mechanics, which states that all things are connected. So what he, he was looking at, isolation as a human condition of living in the rural and he was questioning that with his own interest in quantum mechanics. Um, so he, he has an animation piece and then he has pho photography of um, an old mental asylum in Ennis. I suppose he's looking at really mental health as well, looking at connections, people's connection, human relations, how we're connected, how we can be alienated, how we can be isolated. This John Hanrahan's work, he's looking at the medicinal as a theme or a starting point really for his work, which explores in paint and processes um, a very kind of free flow way of working with also more repetitive frameworks to work within. So he's exploring how you can be more spontaneous with materials and using different kinds of materials that aren't necessarily um, traditionally painter's materials, like I think he has dyes in there and coffee. Before this he had taken a lot of recordings from medical device machines mostly to do with yeah, MRI scans or heart kind of um, machines that record heart mechanisms and movements. So this is Marie Knoll's work and it began um, as the Octi Public Art Projects. Uh, in which she explored identity and culture of the Octi regions, which is an area that encompasses Clare and Galway. Mm -hmm. It's on the borders. She's used collage, painting, postcards. She has an animation work, um, very mixed media work, to explore folklore in these areas myths, superstitions and legends that are connected with the area that she's working within to really explore a sense of, to reinterpret that wisdom and to give, to explore a sense of belonging to the place. I know that she collected a lot of materials such as maps um, and information especially on the, on the birds of the area and the plants. Um, and at the same time she was kind of looking at geography in outside of the Octi region as well.
this is Lewis Goodman's work. And Lewis is, his work comes out of a scoop, really, of thoughts um, interactions he has as an artist based in the west of Ireland and how he is influenced by the, by the weather, by changes, by the environment that surrounds him. So he makes playful works um, that use traditional materials, um, very elemental materials, a lot of wood, um, um, stone and he kind of tries to record in, for this exhibition in particular the highs and lows of moods and the weather and how all those things come together. He's interested in text and language as well too. Yeah, the language of materials and the language of text to, yeah, to, to engage with his viewer. He's really, he's really playful and he, he likes to turn things upside down and really, he really likes to engage with his viewer in the way that he uses the materials, in the way that they are materials that you can recognise and in that he uses everyday language as well. They're a great mix. They invite you in and then they are, they're a performance in themselves as well. But they do, um, they ca even the way he uses the mirrors, they, he captures glimpses of the audience. So you're kind of part of the work as well as looking at the work. My own work is in the back gallery and it comes out of my practice where I have sites of operation are two woodland areas. One in Kylnesir County Leash where I grew up and where I worked in the woods with my family and another um, woodland area, um, the Falls Hotel, Ennis Simon and woodland area there. So I'm interested in looking at the systems that exist in the woodland. So systems, plant systems, animal kingdom systems, and how we work or play in those areas. So our human relations interacting with nature's relations. And I'm also very interested in kind of seeing what we can, in our own human relations, learn from the systems that are in nature. So in these works, my question that I gave myself was a, a question of sustainability. How can species exist together? So in answering these questions, I came across aspects of the unfamiliar. So I try to record these through animation, through juxtaposing materials um, from the built environment with very delicate drawings, with animation, with moving, with moving pictures that interacted with places on the blocks that didn't move. So it's really trying to look at how things can work together, how they can merge, not merge, how they can come together, how they can fall apart, how they can, how we can exist in harmony, um, how there can be balance, how things can have their own autonomy and yet coexist. I suppose when I think about the unfamiliar, I think about places that maybe aren't that always that beautiful but maybe trying then also to find something beautiful in something that maybe is not so beautiful so like I've taken the blocks builders concrete blocks and um, projected very delicate drawings onto them so I'm kind of trying to I suppose that's what I call the unfamiliar um, places I would say that we do have a very strong group. We're definitely still, there are st we're still interested in our communities that we work in as artists. We are exploring things in the rural. Um, the rural is used as subject matter as well as 
kind of an object to explore our own themes as well that are interest that we're personally interested in. Um, there is a lot of crossovers and there's been collaboration in within this artwork and we've also helped each other out in in installing the work and putting it together. Um, and through this work and through having it here, we do see a new direction is kind of emerging for the group. And I think that we, we will stay together. It's really the beginning of a lot of artists' work. And we are interested in bringing it outside of this place. And we're interested in connecting with other local um, collaboratives um, and other local communities, maybe outside of Ireland as well. And we're interested in bringing bringing knowledge and what we find out there back to our own lo localities as well.